we are going to be active in the world, as a general rule, the more active we are in the world is the greater the need for balance. To me, the real test of somebody's balance, it's not like some yogis, you probably have heard some yogis, they will live somewhere in the cave or in the Himalayas, they'll be isolated from the world. That can help, that can be tremendously helpful. Right now, we're sitting in a quiet room, everything is quiet and calm to our convenience, so there's less chances of our mind getting disturbed, right? But the real test of our balance is not in such atmospheres. It's in the noise of the marketplace. If you can walk through the marketplace, your mind is being thrown with all kinds of information and stimulus to the senses, yet still your silence and balance is undisturbed. This shows that your balance has a firm foundation. So one key lesson that yoga is trying to teach you is equilibrium. Equilibrium in all things. Equilibrium in the body, between sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic left brain, right brain, equilibrium in the mind. And uh, it's a bit like this, okay? I'll tell you a short story. You've heard of Gautama Buddha, I'm assuming. So one day Buddha, he's sitting under a tree <coughs> and just very quietly next to a river and a boat is passing by with a ferryman on the boat and his friend and the man is tuning an instrument and he's explaining to his friend as he's tuning the instrument. He tells him Please listen very closely. If the string is too tight, the string is going to snap. If the string is too loose, once again the instrument is not going to play. So what is needed is just that fine balance somewhere in the middle. Neither tension to the extreme, neither complete relaxation to the extreme. Just somewhere exactly in the middle. Gautama Buddha overhearing this, it was for him a revelation that this is how everything in the universe is. Everything is so finely balanced. And if we want to be in tune with creation, similarly, we must be finely balanced within ourselves. Yoga does not want you to reject the external world. It only wants you to have a shift of reference. Deal, first of all, deal with what is most essential to your well-being, which is what is within you, right? Our experience of life, is it not just what is our perception? So we're all about right now, suppose you're in a great party, everybody is celebrating, but within your mind you're nervous, fearful, anxious. No celebration is happening within you, right? And even if the whole world is in misery, but within yourself, you're truly peaceful, silent, and contented. Still, it doesn't matter. Within yourself, life is blissful. Life is a celebration. So this is often what we fail to understand. We are so quick to blame external circumstances. I am like this. Let's look at it technically. Are we okay to go further? By the way, anybody has any questions, you know, just ask. Okay, great. So, take any experience or any situation. <clears throat> what is first involved, the very first thing, is stimulus, vibration. The eyes see something, ears hear something, nose smell something, tongue tastes something. First, we have some stimulus. Or let's say you're not looking, let's say you're not looking at a tree, okay? your eyes are closed, the thought of the tree comes into your mind. That is also a stimulus. So this is the very first step. We have a stimulus. Then what happens? This stimulus is taken by the nerves in the body, the nerve currents, presented to the brain, and then there's a reaction. What will be that reaction? It will just be what is our programming? 
what is our conditioning. So somebody who has experienced this so much in life to be stressful, day by day that experience is strengthened, reinforced, then it is his programming to be stressful. You put him in almost any situation, he will be stressful. So that is just a mechanical thing. It's really not something so much in our hands. You know, our mind and body is, is very much like a machine. It's just responding by what is instinctive. If it's instinctive for you to be stressful, you will be stressful. If it's instinctive for you to be peaceful, you will be peaceful. But that is reaction. But besides reaction, there's a third step. And this third step to me, this is what determines all the quality of our life. Besides a reaction, there is a response to the reaction. Do you get my meaning? The response to the reaction? So fear arises in me. Anger arises in me. What is my response in the moment? Do I become attached? Do, do I become identified? Or can I learn to remain a non-critical observer at a distance. This is what determines the quality of our life. How are we reacting to life in the present moment? Past is gone forever. That is just a dream. Future is always a dream. Nobody has seen the future. It's always arriving. And when it arrives, it will be just in the form of this present moment. So how are we responding to life in this present moment? This is the most essential thing. Much more important than all of our beliefs, all of our theories, all of our philosophies, any ideas that we are carrying in the mind, right? You believe in love, but love is not happening in this present moment. Love is not relevant to you, just an idea. Everybody wants happiness. Everybody wants well-being, right? But how much of a gap of distance is there between what we desire, what we believe, and our immediate experience in the present moment? Right? So, uh, it's a bit like this, okay? There's a Chinese farmer, okay? A wise Chinese farmer. And this farmer has four wild horses. So one day, one of the horses, he runs away into the forest. So the neighbors, they come to the farmer and they say, Oh, this is so unfortunate. Your horses have run away. We don't know how you're going to manage. How unlucky you are. The farmer quietly says, Maybe. The next day, to his surprise, the horse comes back from the forest and Amazingly, he brings with him four more wild horses. The neighbors came to the farmer again and they said, How fortunate! Just because yesterday you've lost your horse, today now you have four more wild horses. How lucky! Then the man said, the farmer said, Maybe. Then this farmer, you know, he had a young son. The young son, being inexperienced and riding on the wild horse, he rides out with him into the forest. He loses control of the horse, he falls over, he breaks his leg. Once again, the farmers, uh, the uh, neighbor, neighbors come to the farmer, they tell him, Oh, how unfortunate. You had some wild horses yesterday, and today, as a result of that, your son has broken his leg. How unfortunate. Farmer again, he said, Maybe. The next day, there are government officials in coming into the village, going from door to door to ask members to join, uh, to recruit members to join the army. So they knock on the door of the Chinese farm and they said, okay, now it's the time for your son to come join the army. So the man said, sorry, I cannot let you take him. Anyway, he's unfit for army because just yesterday he's broken his leg. So he was exempted from joining the army. So finally the neighbors came together one last time. They told him, how, unfortunate, how fortunate. Because your son has broken his leg yesterday, today he does not have to join the army. How lucky you are. 
Then the farmer, once again, he said, maybe. Isn't that the experience of our life? What might seem to be blessing today can evolve, seems like a tragedy tomorrow. What seems like a tragedy today can evolve and seem like a blessing tomorrow. Life can be such uncertain business. But we only have two paths, two roads available to us. Either we can approach our life consciously or approach our life unconsciously. So if we approach our life unconsciously, we are a slave to the circumstances of life. Our well-being is very fragile. We will just be happening as a reaction to the outside. So if the outside world is going well within ourselves, we will be well. If the outside world is unpleasant within ourselves, we will be unpleasant. If we are only happening as a reaction to the outside, our well-being will be very fragile. So what, is, what we are trying to do in the techniques of yoga is just create a small shift. Let everything that has to do with your well-being have its roots from within you. And let that be the foundation for all of your external actions in the world.